What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today I've got a special from CCKS 2024 from February, just uh, about a week ago here, from the time I'm filming this one. Number 35, uh, Shirogorov F95NL inlay, Gen 5, M390 blade, teal technocarbon inlay, multi-row bearing system, with, as you can see on the bottom, high tex chip, also inlaid with that teal technocarbon. Pretty cool. Kova um, knife holster as well, which is awesome, but uh, I'm going to move this stuff to the side, the COA anyway, and I will show you, comes with this guy, high tech chip, that's the little card box, super cool, we will show this later in the video, and open that up and show you all about that cool coin, but the money is in here, there's that cool pouch, um, the Kova leather, just a reminder, this is more of a coffee shop style conversation where we're not going to go into crazy details on uh, blade angles and this, that, the other thing. We're just looking at some knives. So sit back, relax, grab a beer, grab a coffee, uh, water. I'm having a, a club soda here. And uh, let's take a look at a knife. Let's have some fun and uh, kind of just go with the flow more than anything. Uh, as well, uh, check out the website. A lot of the items featured on this channel are available for sale. Bladezilla.ca, which is in Canada, and as you can see, the beautiful backdrop of this website is this exact cutting board, which is beautiful. Uh, a couple CDs on here right now, Quantum Blue, the F95 NL, this knife exactly, this one right here, which I just put up, and I'm filming right now, so I just threw that online. But um, yeah, Bladezilla.ca, and uh, the owner of number 35 will get a cool video that uh, they don't even know about yet which is cool. So uh, I'll always love this kind of stuff. So we're going to check this guy out in a bit here, the coin, but let's first and foremost take a look at this cool knife, the cool pouch it comes in, and uh, I guess we could take a look at the knife. Um, just a reminder as well, um, look, at the, uh, look at the stitching on this. Do you think they color match that? I think they did. I think they color match the stitching to match the knife. That's a nice little detail, hey? Hopefully you can see that. Um, anyway, I will say this as well. This uh, this particular case, it's always good because they, you're supposed to put the coin in here. And that's, that's the beauty of it. You carry the coin inside the case uh, with the knife. So that's what that little spot is for, uh, which is a nice little detail. But we're going to put that aside. We're going to take a look at the knife in all its glory. What do you guys think? Number 35. So first impressions on this, uh, which I've already obviously taken photographs of this, so this is more of a second impression uh, of the knife, I suppose. So this is a F95 NL, which NL, fun fact, means inlay. It's a little play on words. And uh, Gen 5. So kind of a, a real interesting setup. M390 blade as well, which should be on the other side, if I recall correctly. Um, so the CCKS show knives tend to be, you know, unique special editions. Um, they're limited to 50, so that's what holds their demand typically. But they are, for you know, a lot of other purposes, they are production knives. So I'm assuming at one point they'll come out with this similar knife. Um, in a production setting with a little less bells and whistles. So I don't have a spec sheet on this knife right in front of me while I'm doing this as well. So we're going to kind of just wing it and uh, kind of go with the flow, which is my specialty uh, if you ask my wife. Just winging it. So let's start off with the inlay. So it's got that cool kind of teal colored technocarbon, which looks phenomenal. And as you kind of move around the light, it's constantly changing. And if you compare this particular knife with uh, other show pieces, this will all be different, which is what I love so much about it, right? They're all unique. They all have different patterns and some will have more teal, some will have more dark black, some will have more gray, some will have more clear. It's just the beauty of the knife. If we work our way back here, you'll see we've got that sheer Goroff bear, which I love because it's not on the blade. It's out of the cutting area. It's not going to wear off over time. That's a nice detail. The, the 
the frame lock frame is uh, it's kind of got a gold bronze anodization to it. And when I first saw images of this particular knife, I kind of just assumed it was uh, more of like an Ursus kind of finish, but in hand it is much higher level than I was expecting. But just the original images when they had kind of like a, you know, this area kind of shown, it just looked uh, unfinished. Uh, but in person, you, you, you zoom out on the knife, you look at it, and it is done incredibly well. It's, uh, it's a high-end production from Shiro. Um, so that being said, it's going to be multi-row bearings, MRBS instead of single row bearings. It's going to have all the detail and work done on the clip, as you can see. Down here on the frame, it's all milled beautifully well. It should be up top here as well. I can't actually see because I'm looking at a tiny screen when I'm trying to focus the camera. But it should be all milled nicely up top here, vertically. I guess it'd be horizontally. And if you're looking at that in 4K, I'm hoping you are, it should just look beautiful. The light should be bouncing around. It should just be excellent. You get the inlay on the, bar, uh, on the lock bar as well which goes even underneath the clip, right? So my, my first problem with inlays typically is they, they stop it right around there. And then as you're going in and out, you tend to pry yourself underneath the inlay. Well, what's the solution to that? We're gonna put that right under the clip, kind of stabilize that whole area. You can kind of see the bottom of it there. Beautifully done. The blade itself looks to be about three and a half mil, I'm guessing. Nice thick jimping on top here, very useful. The F95 is Shirogorov's Sebenza Large, for lack of better words. It's been around over a decade now. They've done all kinds of variations on it um, in different blade steels from, you know, from the entry level right up to the high end, uh, you know, custom division stuff and beyond, full customs, etc. So it's their it's their excellent knife, fits well in hand. You know, the jimping is very comfortable. You can see they've got rounding right up the top here in the middle, which is a nice kind of feature. And then it expands out to support the, the girthy tip. That's what she said. I just can't help myself, I'm so sorry. But yeah, it expands nicely up, beautiful. Nice big drop point. And then the actual tip of the, of the blade here you kind of see a little nose on there. It kind of has like an F95-0 vibe to it, which is cool, right? And I think some of the neons are actually doing that. If I grab my neon, I'm going to do some comparisons at some point here, but I thought my neon zero that I have has that same finish, that same little edge on it. It does. If it wants to focus, it would be cool. See on the blade? That little tip up top here, that little it angles down. That's a nice little touch. And lo and behold, you look at the blade, same profile. Kind of pinches in and then gets a nice little tip. So real cool. We're going to kind of compare that uh, at some point, probably now. Um, let's do a couple comparisons. So, um, okay, we'll get started. So let's do some F95s. Uh, so let's grab the, where is it? There's the silk. Silk Slim, uh, which is an F5 Silk Slim. And remember the angle of the camera. If I move that up here, it's going to look smaller behind. It's going to look bigger up front. Um, I would say the true representation is probably if I just do one at a time and go like this. It seems to be. These are the same size, these knives. So uh, hoping it should look pretty close. Any guesses? No? Just leave it like that. Leave it in the middle and do one at a time, I guess. So F5 Silk Slim. Really, we'll do the neon that I just had somewhere hiding that I've already put back away upside down in my case. You know, so production, obviously. Custom division. Early custom division. Looks pretty cool. The neon's basically uh, a little baby F95. Pretty cool. Put that guy away. Uh, our Quantum Blue. Uh, this is a different Quantum Blue than the one that's up on the site for reference. This is my Quantum Blue, but there is one up on the site. So more swoopy and uh, pretty cool. Really cool knife. Probably the best of the Quantums. Let's put 
that away. Grab uh, Neon Custom Division down here. We can grab the Vegas V cards up top. Sinkovich. Nice cool knife. Real cool knife, actually. And you're kind of seeing a nice size comparison here because these are both very little as well. Little gaffers, as they say. Uh, we can grab, what else we got here? Sinkovich Biodark. For size comparison, we showed the Quantum. Uh, but I will grab another Quantum Production. I think I've got a Monkey Edge one here. Uh, where are you? There you go. Monkey Edge. Quantum. Single row bearings. Real cool knife. Love that knife from a production standpoint. We can grab the CCKS. Another knife. This is a Hattie from uh, a couple of years back. Gold backspacer, looks real good. Love that knife as well. Uh, we can do the Kami. Sinkovich knife. I love just showing all kinds of different knives here. It's honestly half the fun. Hope you guys enjoy that kind of stuff. We can do the Hattion as well. I've got one of those floating around. Hattion is a carbon-faced, or carbon show scale, uh, neon. And then the ever-popular in uh, our F95 Custom Division from, uh, geez, years and years ago. Uh, super cool. Super cool knife. I have done a video on this exact knife as well, um, just for reference. Uh, and then uh, blue, Quantum. Quantion. Quantium, sorry. So, which is a multi row bearing. Um, it's supposed to be like a entry level Hattion, but with G10. Also, super sick value in that one. And I have that one in a number of different colors and configurations for anyone interested in that. I think I've got a handful of each on the site. Um, and then I've got this one as well. There you go. Dr. Death, full tie. One of my faves from that lineup in that series. And then outside of the Shirogorov world, which uh, apparently nothing exists, we have a Sebenza Large. So there we go for size comparison of non Shiro branded items. I know I always get asked how things look uh, in comparison, and I do have a bunch of Stellars. They're all locked away, and I apologize to show them scale, but uh, I know everyone always asks to see the Stellar, and uh, the Stellar's on the site. They're, I'm not opening them. They're in and out, so uh, at this point, those are uh, not not going in my personal case. So, just for reference, if anyone's curious, this is a Thunderbird gear Sebenza, which is glass blasted with uh, I think S45 VN on it. I can't recall. I think it's S45. But uh, anyway, that's all we're here to talk about. Talk about this beautiful. F95. So, fun fact, the F95, 95 meaning the length of the blade, which is 95 millimeters. Um, and for my American friends who don't know what a millimeter is, because in Canada that's what we use, the metric system, it's right around 4 inches. So you can see on the bottom there, 100 is 100 mils. So, uh, there you go, 95 mils, which is a nice length, really, really good. It's, it's a big size for an EDC. But honestly, the way Shirogorov packs it into this handle, it's really not that big. It's just a really good size. Because it's, it's a thin knife. So, 95 mil blade, you get this cool cutout on the top here, which looks awesome. Real good looking blade. Just timeless. Like, this is an absolute timeless design. Real comfortable handle, no, no hot spots. Jimping is real easy to to get your finger and thumb on. It just fits well. The the work around the handle here is next level for production. Like it is, there's there's no one doing this type of work at this price point in the volume they're doing. It's just an incredible experience. The multi-row bearings um, on this particular one feel fantastic. They, uh, at the factory, apparently now do like a little waxy kind of oil in there, so they tend to take a little while to break in. And by a little while, I mean, you know, 100 deployments. But uh, 
real nice medium detent just a beautiful beautiful knife as you can kind of see just really silky smooth and it is multi row bearing so if you think about bearings right in your traditional sense like balls in a track on like a hula hoop configuration these are more of a pinwheel so it's like one two three in a row kind of in a pinwheel pattern in a circle which adds to stability from a side to side movement which is beautiful the internals of this are all milled out excessively skeletonized which looks beautiful i'll grab a light here and show you in the inside Hopefully you can see in, but you should see it's all milled, super, super light, and we'll get the weight on this here at some point. But uh, very, very lightweight inside. We've got spacer gaps, which is beautifully done. And then you can see the milling once again, kind of like the S pattern. Um, you know, this is this is to me like the absolute peak of production knives right now. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful design. If we look at the lock bar here, so we're looking at the back, see how it's raised compared to the rest of the knife? And it's beveled. This is why everyone loves this knife. Your thumb finds that lock bar super, super easy without any problems. It's It's got a nice bevel, and not only that, the closer you get on there, the more you see all the milling on it. It's just incredible for a production knife. It's just ridiculous. You do need a sure off tool, both the small and large, on this guy, which you can see, one and two. And uh, that's simply to open this. You can use a screwdriver, you can use uh, you know, a penny, a MasterCard cut in half, because you're not going to need it once you buy this. Uh, a joke, obviously. Don't use a screwdriver. Use a material that's you know softer. If you remember, I think it's uh, from science class, is it called Mohs Hardness Scale or something? Or the Rockwell Hardness Scale? I can't remember. Uh, you basically, you're looking for a material that's softer than those, which a lot of people use pennies for that because they're made of uh, a softer material. But you can get tools. Um, I'm going to have some tools later in the week. Uh, I'm just trying to time this in my head when I'm going to put this video out, but I'll have some tools available later in the week uh, on the website. So uh, they will be going up, which is awesome. You get a color matched backspacer which is a phenomenal nice and thick it just looks great I'm gonna put this away so I don't cut myself real nice backspacer color matched just looks great and then on the back you've got the spot for your lanyard hole but from the side profile you don't get the punch through like the Stellar has so it's visibly very very pleasing to your eye perfectly dead center it's a, it's a sure gore off. You shouldn't have to worry about that. And then the other part I really love here is actually the back of the clip here. The bowl, I guess, or the, the bend in the lock bar here. It's all milled in here. Like these, are, you'd think it'd be more of like a stone wash in here. It is milled to perfection in there. It looks so good. Just looks so incredible. We've got a, an over travel stop and a lock metal lock bar insert. You'll see here. With pretty light lockup, sure Groff likes to kind of err on the side of light. But the design itself is very, very strong. Uh, accessible from the outside as well. And this guy, which it looks to be a Torx. Like a T, I think it's probably 8 or 6, something like that. And then the blind pivot, which looks great. Just a well done knife. Now, I'm not going to open this one up, take this one apart at all, but uh, I would love to see if there's a pin spacer on this inside. I don't know if there is, but uh, yeah, maybe James will do that. We'll find out. Someone will find out. Because they seem to be kind of adjusting their production knives to kind of even one more level up than what we're used to. The uh, If you look at the actual flipper tab, you'll see it is in front of the pivot just ever so slightly on the F95 which is a real nice consistent kick out as well and why I say that is if I grab my Dr. Death which I always like to show this on because it's a bit of an example of it when the flipper tab is behind the pivot right think of it as going into a bigger gear on your bicycle in the back bigger cog more teeth so it's a slower deployment right and the more you move that in front it's like a smaller cog on your bicycle where it just high leverage hammers out quicker. 
right? So the F95 is kind of right in that middle sweet spot, which is just a nice, smooth, you know, Sabenza-like, not Sabenza-like, but Sabenza, you know, plain and simple, safe deployment. Like it's just, it's their go-to rock solid level of uh, fun times, you know? How do you improve it? Well, I'd like to see pivot collars if they ever go that road on the production. Give it, uh, give it time though, it'll get there. I'd like to see the backspacer kind of climb all the way to the top, to the halfway point, but is it needed? No. Jimping on the flipper tab is incredible, nice and smooth, consistent, timeless, it's a classic. You know, this is, uh, if you're buying one Shiro Goroff, I will probably say something like this, this exact knife, because you're, get, you're hitting all the sweet spots in the price points, you're getting limited quantities of 50, which uh, all the other production knives don't have, so it's going to hold its value. You get a collectible coin, which we'll get into, and uh, and a COA, like and, and a leather leather sheath, which is just phenomenal. So like you're hitting all the sweet spots with this knife, and it's cheaper than uh, it's cheaper than their kind of collaboration pieces. It's cheaper than their special editions. So it's it's well done. I love the bears on the handle. That is like my my favorite part is when it's on the handle there. And the fact that it's also matching the stitching on the sheath, like that's a nice little detail. That's the sheer goal if I know. So anyway, let's get into the uh, the coin here, which is in this little card holder that it kind of comes with. So I'm gonna move the knife to the side and bring it back. I just don't wanna scratch anything or anything, but anyway. So, high techs, USA. Nothing, no writing on this at all. I'm going to kind of open this guy up. And just like that, magic. So it kind of comes in this nice little, little foam carrier. But here's the beauty. You get sheer gore off on one side, and I do sense some hints of blue on here. If I'm not too crazy. Um, and close in person anyway. I'm not going to polish this or anything, but beautiful coin. These are usually... I want to say 200 bucks US when they do release them, which is, you know, annually kind of thing. Nice and smooth around the edges. Hopefully I can get a side profile on this. Beautifully done. I think the coin's titanium. I, I couldn't, uh, what did it say? Did it say on that COA? Uh, uh, what did it, was it? I thought it was, yeah, titanium. And then on the flip side, we've got another little piece of the matching inlay. And the light bounces around, you've kind of got the polished flats. It's a well done coin. Looks cool. And for those who want to see them side by side, let's see if the camera won't will do that. Looks cool, hey? Try to get them. Try to get them like this. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice set. I think that looks cool. I'm gonna get this to focus on this. There we go, one sec. And great, I'll bring that back in here. Yeah, that's a nice little setup. I think that's I think that's better than last year's uh, kind of coin. The fact that they're adding the carbon inlay on there. I just think that looks so cool. And it's just such a nice touch, because it's like, you can obviously do this stuff, so it's cool that they're doing it more often than, than not. So I will put this back in here and leave it carbon side up because why not I think that looks real sharp that's a nice touch and then like I said it comes in that card case which is uh, super cool because you always kind of keeps it nice and safe in there uh, which is awesome from high techs another brand that makes some real cool stuff in USA high techs gear there you go so that's that um, I think I've already showed you the CCKS badge, and then the leather, um, I will show this as well, may as well put that down in the background. And then I have showed you this, so that coin that can kind of slide in here, I'm not going to do that now. But uh, I can slide in top, and you can walk around with your house, showing it off, like a gunslinger, be cool. And you know, that little detail work on the stitching I think is a nice touch in that you're getting the color matched, which just looks cool. 
Um, and I wanted to show you this because of that CCKS. So this was another CCKS knife uh, in terms of kind of what they do when they when they do a little bit over the top. Um, not over the top, but when they do something a little different. So this particular knife is a CCKS knife. So they changed the backspacer, made it look cool, you know, different material. And then typically they'll change the blade steel. So this one's S90V instead of the standard M390. So I think a lot of people are like, well, how come you didn't do S90V on this knife? And I can't tell you why. Um, I will say this though, I think when this came out, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this was even more money though, table. And it came with a coin and a sheet, that's fine. But I think this may have been more money. Or was it 1600? Came with a coin, I've got that somewhere. But uh, yeah, just, I don't know, I don't know why they didn't do it. Maybe the this particular Gen 5 is just a little more work required. But, you know, improvements, I would have loved to have seen, you know, M398 or S90V instead of uh, 390. So that would have been cool. But you can't win them all. And let's be honest, M390 is like the gold standard now. It's such a great material. So, you know, the fact that you want a different material, you're really just asking for it to be different for the sake of it being different. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, instead of... You know, the exact same material on the other one, well, they're actually changing the handle. Instead of it being plain tie, well, they actually anodize it. So there's a lot more money involved here as well in the production. You're putting an inlay into it that you'll never see again. You know, it's the detail work. Like, look at the little screw. See how the handle bulges out around it? Like, it's just so well done. For a production knife, this is just nuts. It honestly is just nuts. And probably my favorite F95, other than I'm guilty as charged, I love the turtle. The turtle, eh, some people hate that turtle, uh, the F95T. Some people absolutely hate it, and I just think it's one of my favorites. And I've gone in the store now dozens and dozens of turtles through, and I wasn't able to keep a single one of them. And, uh, you know, a turtle with an anno, get out of town. That'd be un unbelievable. But um, yeah, super easy to work on as well. If you're uh, if you're uncomfortable on working on your your knife and you're in Canada, I know uh, I think if you've checked out Fab Blades Fabry, he works on knives out of Vancouver on Shiro's and does a great job. Um, you know, definitely hit him up um, for service work. But let's be honest, like even multi row bearings, they're very simple once you figure out how to do it kind of take it all apart in stages and steps. Yes, there's loose balls, but if you have a little tray, it's truly a great way to get to know your knife. Um, it's not challenging, and it's just take your time. He does a lot of videos as well. I'm assuming most people watching this will have seen his content. Um, he does a lot of how-tos, which are just step-by-step, -step, very easy. And also, I'm loving how this clip's attached internally. I just noticed that, if it wants to focus. No, nothing on the outside, just beautiful details, guys. Uh, beautiful details. So that is the knife. I've shown you the the, the uh, sheath with it. I've shown you the coin. Comes with a beautiful uh, COA as well, like I showed earlier. And uh, a real nice little kit that when you start adding up the bits and pieces of it, you go, okay, yeah, it is expensive. But the coin's 200 US, right? The fact that it's anodized, it's got an inlay, it's a new knife, it's it's different. There's more money involved in making the knife. Um, you know what? I get it. It should be a big hit. And uh, I don't see why. You know, people wish it had an M390 blade. I, I, I get S90V would have been cool, but you know, they've also changed the knife. And done more to it than, than traditionally, so... And let's, let's not forget the Stellar Touch that just came out was, I think, 17 or 1800 bucks. Came with a tool, great, but it was still M390. Same thing, right? Their tools are a couple hundred bucks, so, you know, it's, it's kind of a give and take. But you're, within, you're in, the, in the right zone. So I think, uh, I think these are going to be really popular. The fact that they're numbered, cool looking knife, good colors. The teal plays on gold real, real nice. Um, 
I think this is going to be a cool knife that everyone's going to be digging. And it just fits my hand so well. Like, I just love this knife. And the fact that it's got a little bit of a bulge to the inlay as well. If it wants to focus, you can see all the layers in it. There's a little bit of a bulge. It makes it feel a little thicker in your hand. And it's all contoured. It's a real nice feel to it. It kind of gives it a bit of a ramp up in hand. A little different than a traditional F95 that I've had. It's a real nice fit. So, yeah, hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys dig the knife. Hopefully you guys, uh, well, if you dig the knife, great. If not, it's uh, no sweat off my back. But, um, yeah, I think this is a cool one, guys. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Checking the CCKS 2024 spring, I guess you'd call it, or February knife, um, number 35, uh, which is available in the store right now. And uh, I actually have, I think, another one floating around. So, um, yeah, these are probably going to go pretty quick um, over the weekend, hopefully. But, um, yeah, someone's going to have a lucky 35 video with their knife. And uh, I think you guys are going to really like this. Real killer knife. Really well done. I've seen a lot. Of, I've I've seen a lot of Shiragoros. This one's really well done. It's really really well done. All right, guys. We'll have a good week. Any questions? Leave them below. Otherwise, visit Bladezilla.ca. Uh, leave a comment. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok. Send me an email. Anything short of the bad signal is always appreciated. And uh, as always, appreciate you guys. Okay. Have yourself a good week. Peace.